Hi traders, welcome to the live webinar with Admiral Markets. Today's focus is going to be on the German elections 2017, a political event that can have impact on the markets. We've seen that before, of course. Uh, this year we had election, uh, important election in France, for instance. Last year we had in the US, plus of course, uh, a Brexit vote or uh, referendum. So uh, yes, these things can have impact on the financial markets. We're going to be looking at, first of all, Nana and I, myself, uh, will be looking at, first of all, what we can expect from the elections themselves from a political point of view, and then also what kind of impact uh, you know the event could have on the financial markets, including Forex, the Euro, uh, including uh, the stock indices, et cetera. So before we start, though, uh, one word of uh, the two disclaimers, in fact, uh, this webinar is shown to a global audience, but may not be suitable for everyone. Please visit AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence and contact the appropriate entity to find out if this webinar is suitable for you. And please note that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and education purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right, here you have an idea how we look like. This is Nana on the left, myself on the right. And what is it all about? Well, basically, Germany, part of the EU, European Union, is going to vote uh, on the 24th of September. That's two days from now on Sunday. And uh, basically, uh, we will see the results, I think, somewhere in the evening. We should see the first results, uh, typically. And by Monday, we should have already a pretty good idea who has won. Uh, so now, why is it important? Basically, of course, Germany is uh, the biggest uh, member of the EU uh, in terms of uh, population. I think in terms of country size, I believe, too. Uh, has the biggest kind of say uh, in matters. Of course, the EU itself is um, a global, uh, strong economy. Lots of people involved. Sorry, I heard some background sound there. It got me distracted. But uh, basically, of course, global player, a lot of trade in and out from the EU. Uh, so obviously a, a very important event. Now, what is at stake? There are basically federal elections happening on Sunday, uh, the voters get to choose uh, the Bundestag, which is the parliament, and basically they vote twice. You might be wondering why twice? That doesn't happen normally. Normally you get one vote, one person, one vote. Germany, it's a bit different. You get two votes basically to keep it simple. Uh, one vote is for your kind of regional um, person you want to choose. And the other one is the party, the political party, the national, let's say, countrywide party that you would like to support. So one more regional, one more nationwide. Gives, gives you kind of more flexibility as a voter. Interesting system. Uh, the way the seats are counted is a bit complicated. Uh, I won't dive into that here. I don't think it's really that important for their overall kind of picture. Basically, there are 598 seats up for grabs, but because of the counting of the, of the seats, uh, there could actually be more at the end. There's some composition seats and stuff like that. I think that this particular uh, parliament had about or this particular uh, last four years, the government had or the you know the Bundestag had 630 ish, 631 seats in total. Uh, you know, obviously to become to get into the government, right, to become to govern the next four years, a majority is needed, uh, and that doesn't happen necessarily for one party. Uh, typically, uh, there's a coalition needed. Parties need to agree on a deal for the upcoming years to get that majority. And it looks like, according to the polls, that this is again needed. And we'll take a look at the polls in just a second. What types of you know combinations of parties will deliver such a majority? But it doesn't look that one political party will grab 50% of those seats at the moment. It is then up to the Bundestag to choose the chancellor. So, chancellor. So, just to emphasize, the voters don't directly choose the chancellor. Although, of course, by choosing the political party, it's pretty obvious which chancellor they would get. Uh, in the case of the current uh, chancellor, Mrs. Merkel, by voting on her party, CDU, CSU, uh, 
of course, they increase the chance that their party will choose Merkel as chancellor. But it's not a kind of a direct choice, uh, like you know, in the U.S., for instance. So that's just a bit of a background into uh, the elections in Germany. To get, let's say, a, a quick overview of the German elections within the political kind of atmosphere of the last uh, two years. Well, of course, 2016 was uh, a big political, uh, yeah, basically bump in the road or upheaval or turnaround, uh, you know, whatever word you want to use, a storm perhaps, right? A uh, political storm that is uh, because of two primary events, Brexit, Donald Trump, the current president of the U.S., of course, unexpectedly showing that uh, the current direction of politics with continuous globalization uh, is not as kind of, you know, cannot be accepted as ever continuous, right? You could see that the, 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 popula the, the voters were uh, kind of voting against that particular direction. Now, 2017 uh, has been calm from this point of view, at least. Of course, there have been other things going on from a geopolitical point of view, uh, North Korea uh, and the U.S., for instance, but uh, also quite a lot of, uh, unfortunately, also quite a lot of uh, hurricanes and, and stuff like this. But from an election point of view, uh, been quite has been quite quiet. France did choose an outsider, but an outsider that was pro-EU. I think that was an important point uh, for the establishment in France. And not, Netherlands did not see any particular shock. And when you look at the German polls, we don't see any shock coming up either. So it seems to be a quiet year from this point of view, from an election point of view. So let's talk a little bit about these uh, polls uh, and uh, why does it seem to be a quiet event? Although, of course, you never know how the markets will react. And that is something that Nenet will take a look at very uh, soon. So basically, what can we expect from the polls? The polls, of course, are not perfect. We saw that last year, right? And uh, we saw that there were some errors uh, in, in forecasting that uh, led to some miscalculations there. With the German polls, the probability of an error like that is small. So these polls should be stable, uh, not expecting any big swings here. Merkel, the current chancellor, and she would be then going for fourth uh, term, in fact, making it 16 years potentially in total. Now it's 12 years, 16 years in total, and that would be a tie with uh, the Chancellor Cole, who also served 16 years, uh, basically has, at the moment, 35 to 40 percent range in the polls. That's a comfortable lead when compared to uh, SPD and their uh, runner, Schultz, at 22 percent. So pretty decent sized gap there. The polls have been pretty stable, except when Schulz actually started with the SPD beginning of this year, their, their numbers shot up for a short brief time, but then returned back down. Other parties, uh, the right or far right AFD, uh, far right party getting 11%, FDP, the pro-business party, 10%, and also left and green party, uh, you know, in contention here, they need 5%, any party needs 5% uh, threshold, as far as I uh, understood, if I understood correctly, 5% threshold to get into the Bundestag. So with some exceptions for some minority parties, uh, by the way, but that's, again, uh, going into detail. So basically, with this kind of roadmap ahead of us, uh, we would expect Merkel to be the next chancellor. It would be... I, Big major shock if that did not happen, uh, and it's pretty much inconceivable at this moment. But uh, you never know. Uh, Sunday we will know. So that's the polls at this moment. Uh, what type of coalition partners and options are possible? As I said, 50% of the seats, or 50.1% of the seats, right, uh, is needed to uh, to have to you know to to govern basically. So it doesn't look like that the CDU, CSU, which is Merkel's party, will get that. It looks like they're getting 35 to 40%, so they need a partner. So what kind of partner 
could they uh, could they get? Well, SPD, of course, uh, which is the Socialist Party. CDU is the Christian Party. I'll talk about the parties a little bit more in, in detail in just the, the next slide. Um, FDP is the pro-business party. Green, of course, in favor of uh, environment, climate, and supporting that and helping that. And uh, basically, the combinations here seem to be, and this is the probability of this coalition happening according to CNBC source, by the way, number one, 40% probability of a, a grand coalition, which is the Christian party plus the social party, socialist party, uh, because they have 35, 40% and the socialist is 22. So, you know, 22 plus 35, you cross easily the 50% threshold. Second option could be the social, uh, the, sorry, the Christian party, CDU, Merkel's party with the pro-business party plus greens uh it's called the nickname as far as i remember let me double check that i think it's because it's a funny name but it's called the jamaica coalition indeed um not nothing to do with the fact that jamaica is funny i didn't mean that but you know just funny that it refers to a country um so that's about a 40 percent probability option number three christian party plus the pro-business party has about a 20 percent chance of a coalition at this moment. And if you look at the trend, uh, the number one coalition is down from 50 to 40. The two is up from 20 to 40. And the third option is down from 30 to 20. So that's the trend and the chance. What type of topics are we talking about? Well, basically, external and internal issues, roughly speaking, um, external issues, Climate change, security, terrorism, immigration, roughly speaking, are uh, things on the mind uh, in, in discussion points at this, this, this year, in fact. Now, climate change, maybe not in the same context as you have heard from the U.S. In the U.S., uh, there's more debate about if there is climate change and who, what is causing it, uh, stuff like that. In Germany, it's not a debate about if and what but about action i think as far as i understood more about how to tackle it not whether it exists or, or what is causing it but more about the appropriate response to it so the paradigm is is, is a bit different in that regard uh it seems that the german politicians are more you know agreeing with each other on the direction it is more about details you know from this point of view when compared to the us at least then of course there is the matter of uh, security, terrorism, immigration, uh, the FDP, the far right uh, party in Germany, trying to win votes by uh, showing that it's in favor of security, less immigration, tackling as hard as possible in a way on, on, on terrorism issues. Uh, the same, though, would be valid for the main parties who want, for instance, America wants more police on the streets, wants to employ more people for that as well. Um, so you see kind of also here quite on security issues with the two main parties, uh, quite some similarities. On internal issues, there could be some gap, although the Social Democrats uh, do have a vision of a social economy uh, with Know, within a free democracy. The socialists are, of course, trying to address the social inequality. You might be wondering why German's economy is going very well, lots of exports, low unemployment rate, GDP going up, doing very well the last um, five to 10 years specifically, um, even during the crisis, uh, uh, the Great Recession. So we're after that. So basically, uh, you do see some social inequality at this moment. Despite that, uh, interesting enough, it is not necessarily everyone sharing in that prosperity, but it seems that enough people do share in that prosperity that a big change of political power is not expected. All right, Unemployment uh, still low at 4% or below 4%, uh, but of course, trying to get that even lower. So, sorry, I, it seems like I actually skipped my mind to uh, discuss those political parties uh, in more detail. I thought I had a slide about that. But just to give you, as I promised, an overview um, 
once again, five, these are the main political parties. So just to give you a recap, CDU, CSU, main party at this moment, Christian Democrats, basically in favor of socioeconomic, social ecological market economy, free democracy, strong EU supporter, and um, uh, basically SPD, socialist party, right, trying to uh, main main point is more taxes on uh, on the wealthy and giving more tax breaks to middle income and also helping uh, supporting more the lower income brackets. Uh, AFD, as I said, far right, more uh, focused on immigration, FDP pro business, roughly very quickly uh, left and Green Party, Green Party ecological left, a bit further left than the SPD. Uh, as far as I understood, just to give you a quick context there, as I promised. So what can we expect regarding the end result? And then uh, we're going to pass it over to Nenet, who is going to take a look at the, the markets, what impact we might expect beforehand, how things could look like on Monday afterwards. Uh, and Monday, by the way, just in case uh, you're not aware, we do have one more webinar on this front, and we're going to take a look at the impact of uh, the German federal election right here, September 25 at 6 p.m. All right, so there we go. And uh, the end result, what can we expect? Well, basically, we can expect uh, political stability, uh, in my view. Uh, we could expect the Germany to remain pro-EU. We can expect pro-trade, pro-globalization, and we can expect a pro social ecological balance. So these are things that are kind of imprinted already beforehand. But it does depend what accent we might get uh, from the second place, or not the second place, but who get which other parties get how much percent. So what will be the coalition party? If the FDP is the coalition party, it might be more pro-business, right? If SPD is the, the coalition partner with Merkel, uh, we might see more socialist, slightly more socialist agenda compared to the FDP. So this kind of accent still is open and remains to be seen. So that is basically uh, the quick summary uh, of what we can expect. Then is going to take over now, and he's going to take a look at uh, the markets. All right, Nenet, how are you? Hi, Chris. Excellent introduction, political. Yeah, you you always been in politics and excellent, excellent stuff as always. I totally agree with you, with your uh, views. And uh, yes, guys, uh, Chris already announced that we will actually have uh, a session recap that is dedicated to elections because that will be the main impact. Uh, that will be the main impact on markets. Uh, as I already said in the blog, I'm not expecting a huge, huge upset or something that might actually upset us. Everything is pretty much, should be at least, I can say, uh, clear regarding results, but we still need to see what the market is doing. Because guys, at this time, the market is there risking, okay? There is uh, a there risk in the market prior to German elections. Basically, what is happening now is, I will show you, uh, yesterday, uh, pound yen spiked with a huge, huge extent, and that is what I, uh, what I told you to pay attention to. It was really, really a huge spike, and uh, euro dollar went to the POC zone. It rejected only for 30 pips, and then proceeded upwards, so that is what is called uh, a, uh, a they're risking now. So we might see some movement prior to actually uh, prior to uh, Monday's open, and I think there there might be gaps. I'm not sure, of course, but uh, there could be gaps because uh, I I am sure that today there will be some profit taking. We need to pay attention to. Uh, there could be profit taking. It's important to know. And at this time, I will show you what you should be focused on. Okay. So now you can see this is the DAX index. Okay. This is the DAX. And definitely, 
the DAX on, on, a, on a daily basis, you can see here the DAX has broken through this down channel, okay? Now, uh, this channel actually shows me that until this point here in the past, okay, there was a clear downtrend, okay? Started from this spot. I mean, downtrend in a form of retracement because this is uptrend, this is retracement. But if you trade, uh, let's say, on intraday charts uh, and you watch uh, daily for direction, you see this. This was sell on rallies, okay? Because a market were sold and here, this was a breakout. Clear, guys, everything is clear. Watch this. Breakout, retest here, continuation from this point. And still market is, you see here, it's on monthly level and it's still going up, okay? And you know, I always repeat, when uh, equities are going up, you will also see yen pairs going up, uh, but yen pairs where yen is actually uh, quoted currency, not base currency. Okay, so that is what you should also pay attention to. Now, uh, now let's see what you can actually trade, right? That is important. Uh, here at, at uh, DAX, I think that uh, we can buy on rallies. Why? Because on, on daily chart, this is pretty much clear. It broke the downward channel, so it started a possible up move. On four hour time frame, watch this guys. Now this could be an opportunity possibly to buy again, or maybe you already bought the DAX. Because here at this spot, you can see it's going up. Now, later I will show you Euro dollar. And now just watch this, it's upward channel, okay? And it is going up, you see? It is from this spot, okay? It's trying to go up. The MACD is above zero line, okay? And here, as soon as this MACD starts to weaken here, I think that will be an impulse that a correction on four hours is over and it, go, it can go up. Now, of course, as I said, today is a profit-taking day. So you might see also, technically this is uptrend, this is clear. I would have traded this if, let's say, and I might place a long trade, so let's see. But the only risk is German elections and possible they're risking before the elections. So that is why this could actually drop a little bit more before it spikes. So watch for this. If four hour closes above 12,600, that could be a spike. I think, Okay, in, in the best case, as it should be, I mean, if there is no upset from the elections, I think that it will go even higher. That is, if you, if you read my blog, guys, here, that is the blog, the DAX 30, and uh, it's how to trade German elections. Uh, you know that I actually told you that it could go up from this spot, and it could go down from this spot. So quarterly level here is to almost 13.00. So initially it can go down and then be bought again. But watch this, this is 13.00. Now, if we switch on to our chart, you will see that it actually is going towards the level. So let's see here. You see, it's trying to get to the level that I predicted. Okay, it's, it's trying to get there, but the only thing is, will it get there before the elections? Okay, will it get there before? I'm not sure, because it should, because th this is the last day before the elections, right? So today's candle should be that high. I'm not sure that it will happen. But again, it's trying to go up. It's buy on dips. So DEX traders, this is buy on dips. Uh, if it closes above this level, it should go up. Watch the daily chart. Here, we could see initial selling. And straight from the risk uh, to reward perspective, this is the place where you can play some shorts. Uh, of course, because the market will be impacted by elections, the thing is that you should watch, uh, you should treat these shorts only as retracements in the market, okay? only as retracements guys 
because this could reject and then it could be bought again, as I already told you. So I think now it's by the dip on DEX. It could be in, in, in the best scenario for Germany that there is no upset, that Merkel makes a, a, a coalition. Then again, it's by the dips. But the, the, the worst case, in the case of a hung parliament, okay, we will see a drop. I'm sure about it. I mean, I, I maybe it's not good to say I'm sure, but my opinion, I am sure in my opinion that it will drop. It will if we see a hung parliament. So in the case of a major upset that we see a hung parliament or that Merkel loses the elections, DEX will drop. Okay? Uh, now, according to polls, and as Chris explained, Merkel should be uh, one more time a chancellor of Germany. Okay, so that's what market is pricing in. But the only thing is, if there, if we see a hung parliament or Merkel lo uh, loses her elections, then bang, it will drop heavily, guys. And my opinion is that it will go straight to quarterly L5 straight if it if it happens of course a surprise is uh usually i mean don't happen but we last we saw last couple of times where actually trump won elections then uh brexit but then macron uh, won uh, the french election so that was not a surprise so i also think that germans will vote 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 for Miss Merkel, and there, there will no be any surprises in the market. Then we need to switch on to euro dollar, guys. Euro dollar, very important to mention. Uh, euro dollar is actually now in the up channel. I thought yesterday that it will drop, and it started to drop initially. It started to drop initially from 1250, uh, from 1950. Uh, this was uh, the POC zone, okay, and it started to drop, and it dropped for like 30 pips here, and then it stopped. It couldn't go down more because we see weekly L1 level of the Camarilla. Uh, it stopped in its tracks, so here it's it was stopped, and then it proceeded with upward momentum. Now this is now I'm sure that this is strictly because of the elections and you can see a giant head and shoulders guys on four hour time frame okay this is now pretty much it, it looks like the range because this channel is it, it doesn't have an angle big angle to the upside and uh, but you see the price broke through this channel here it went up it it, it tried to go down i actually traded this but uh I closed this only for I think I I don't know if I ever if I got two or three pips from this trade because as soon as it it went here I saw it doesn't move I put my stop to break even plus one and uh, yeah well it sometimes it happens but definitely definitely if it went down if it had gone here then it would have been again a downtrend but now as you can see the major channel is still in play so what I think uh, about euro dollar is if Merkel wins the elections, it will go more to the upside. And now obviously the market is pricing in that Merkel will win. But if, uh, of course, if upset happens, euro dollar will also go down uh, versus euro will go down versus dollar and uh, DAX will go down all these currencies. Uh, and that, that, that are actually tied to euro, where euro is the base currency, they uh, will drop if Merkel uh, loses the election. Uh, but as I say, uh, Mohammed is asking, is it possible for Merkel to lose? I mean, in politics, everything is possible, guys. You know that. Everything is possible. We cannot say it's not possible just because polls are suggesting and our uh, knowledge about politics and economy tells us that uh, it won't happen. So I think it won't happen. Chris thinks also that it won't happen but it's the politics it could happen okay uh, but if i were let's say if i 
were to bet on what would happen, I would say that Merkel, uh, that nothing major will happen. Merkel will probably make a coalition and markets are also showing uh, us that it, it will be uh, the outcome that uh, we all expect. But always be prepared for unexpected. That's what we have learned uh, through these times. So this is what I think. Euro dollar sell uh, only uh, after the elections if it gets too high. I mean, if it gets overextended, okay, to, to, I mean, this is here. This is the place where we could try to sell if it gets there today, maybe. But before the market closes, we might get some scalp trades. This is the place for scalp trades, guys. You see here, 2090. This is the place for scalp trades. Uh, but after the elections, if the price goes up, this is where I think it could reject, but it could proceed even higher. But at this time, now how, how I see it, this is the place to short just is a form of uh, small intraday shorts and, and scalp trades here. Uh, then uh, after the elections, it will be probably a rally and then a sell off and then another rally. Okay, so buying the dips is the option if Merkel uh, makes a coalition and let's say uh, wins the elections, then again, buying the dip in Euro dollar will be probably the option. And this is what I told you, 1800 here, okay, the bottom of this channel after the elections, because then it will probably retest this part here, WL3, X cross with a channel top, and then it will shoot up. If we don't see a retracement, but we see actually a huge spike to the upside, this is the level where you can try to sell monthly H5. It hasn't been tested yet. So 23, 25 will probably provide us with a chance to uh, tr uh, take a, a short. Now mark these levels. I don't know how the market will react after the elections on Monday. So mark these levels, uh, what, what I'm showing you. Today, 2090, after the elections, uh, above 2840 is a spike probably. And the, and the price could go to 23.25. Also, on a dip, watch for 18.00 and 17.50. These are important levels here on euro dollar. Okay, so also watch for that. Uh, so Merkel wins a spike or a spike, then a dip, and then another buy. Because I will be buying there also. I think. It's, it's a normal that uh, people will buying the dip if the dip happens. And these are the levels. Uh, head and shoulders here, okay, big. So this is the intraday level. Today, maybe, I don't know if the price will get there. But if it gets there, we could try a small short. Also here uh, in between 20, 30, 20, 50, also some scalps could be initiated before the election. So watch for those because you, you have a lot of sellers here in the history. I guess initially when the price gets in the zone, it will start to reject also. So pay attention. And now uh, let's say, uh, guys, uh, uh, oil will not be impacted. I also uh, wrote in the blog that, that there shouldn't be any impact on the blog. Uh, definitely because no parties have expressed any dramatic changes to oil, taxes, environmental initiatives, or let's say reducing reliance on oil. So basically uh, oil uh, will not be impacted. Gold, let's see, uh, gold, gold, gold. Yeah, I mean, I for, yeah, one more thing, guys. Uh, yeah, I will, here uh, on the MT4, you can see easily here, guys, lot size calculation, please uh, do this uh, if you want to, trade before the elections, okay, margin calculator, symbol information, uh, chart controls, open positions, everything you see here can be used. It's a very good tool, so please use it, okay? Uh, also, don't, uh, don't over trade. Don't over trade before the elections. Uh, make some small 
uh, entries, uh, low risk, because uh, you don't want to risk a lot before the elections. As I'm saying, market obviously is, is pricing in those elections. So please be careful, guys, be careful. Also here, uh, let me show you uh, uh, gold, 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 gold. It is here, gold, yeah. Uh, now gold, you see, the daily is uh, up, but the thing is, it broke through this channel. So you see how gold went down, and now it's trying to reject from this spot. So uh, 1300, I said in the blog, watch for dips towards 1300 if you read my blog. And that happened basically. The dip happened here, and then we had a spike from 1300. We had a spike, uh, a big spike, 150 pips here. So I hope that you made something out of it if you read my blog here. Okay, I said watch for the dip and this happened. Rejection for 150 pips from this spot. Now, of course, uh, I did this analysis uh, days ago, so market is still moving. But obviously, if you traded gold and angle, yes, maybe you, you saw this indeed. So uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is, I know that you trade gold, so this is actually, this was a great spot to, to, to go long, 150 pips here. But now, watch for the gold. If it closes on, this is important, 13.00. If you see a close on daily, I think the market will try to retest again the, the lower part of the channel because the uptrend will continue only if gold gets back into this up channel trend and it goes above 1300, this is very clear. We have both channels aligned, smaller channel and actually this uh, shorter, but also channel within the channel. When you see channel within the channel, that indicates still that uh, trend is up. Okay, so but the continuation here is only if it gets into the channel for that it needs to close above 1300 if we don't see a close above 1300 then guys well this could drop even further to 1280 this is where we have confluence and even here if it gets there then obviously we will be again in some sort of a range on gold so for bulls Watch for the 13.00 and a possible uh, close back, okay, into the channel. That's very important. Also, now, what is important, guys? Now, let me ask you a question. I need to know that you have been following me carefully and you know what I, I've been talking about. When equities... And yes, European equities and German equities, DAX, will move on German elections. If you trade equities, which is the best pair, not the best pair, but the best currency for in Forex? Okay, please answer me. Which is, what is the best currency that follows equities? Tibor was the fastest one, yen. Yen, indeed guys yen 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 watch for yen that is what i need to tell you 100 times because yen is the pair to trade if you want to trade everything that is risky elections news announcements uh, fed announcements ecb announcements major bank announcements rumors yen guys yen remember that so pound yen pound yen also very good pair i like pound yen honestly guys that has become a favorite pair for me because even if market is not moving let's say if it moves like 20 30 pips yen always moves i really like to trade yen and certainly one of the best pairs to trade now i will show you the blog and that will be my last uh my last uh, explanation before 
Uh, I will show you pound yen, what you can expect from pound yen. But please risk, uh, please yen carry trades. Risk on risk off. Read this. This is very important, guys. Very important. Uh, Japanese make massive carry trades. Okay, for very cheap prices. They invest in foreign markets for returns in risk on sentiment. In risk of environment, when stock markets start to drop, they sell risky assets abroad and return pouring money or monies into the yen. How we call it? We call it repatriating. Okay, it's called a repatriation. Okay, that is the term for returning of the money. Okay, so yen should always move on risky events. And I, I've been mentioning so many times that uh, yen is the pair for you to trade uh, if you want to, well, if you like to uh, have some risky, but maybe more profitable trades, there is yen. And now, uh, do not do not forget to use the VPS tool, uh, volatility protection tool. It's important. You can activate it from your uh, trader's room, okay? That is also very important. Now, okay, now I will get back to my favorite pair, okay? And it's a yen. Just let me open the chart. And yen, 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 a great, great. Here you can also click here and mini terminal. Now we'll uh, go into its mini, mini uh, a rectangle here. So this is very nice. So pound yen. Oh, yeah, you see what I was told. Oh, wow, watch this, guys. <laughs> Huge. Yeah, one of the reasons when I did the pound yen analysis and trades yesterday was also this channel that is really huge. I mean, watch this, guys. This is now big, big, big up move. It broke through this steep violet channel. Now, I think 150, 149.50 here. If it gets, there, or even here, 150.60. If it gets there today, and I might make a small uh, pre-elections scalp trade. Uh, watch this. This is very good level to possibly go long. Okay, and also yen, pound yen should follow the DAX. If DAX is going up, pound yen should follow. If DAX is going down, pound yen should follow. So on a dip, this could be, uh, this is weekly Camarilla pivot, 150, 60. This is the bottom of this channel. This is very close to this ATR, okay, bottom. So this could be initially taken for some scalp swings. I, I assume at least 30, 40 pips because pound yen is making big range, 180 pips. This is what I like to see, 180 pips. This is great, guys. This is great. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, this is, yes, indeed. So, guys, watch for this. Daily, daily, a long time since this has broken to the upside. So, what I can say, if it closes above this 153.40, Wow, guys, we will be again in a huge uptrend and buying the dips will still be the option until proven otherwise, buying the dips. Now, for dips, as I say, watch four hour. Now, this is the first level. If it gets, if it spikes from here, watch for this channel. If it gets more to the downside, then we will have a deeper retracement because guys watch daily. Daily, I mean, Judging from this spot, daily needs a retracement. But where is the order block here? This is where the order block is, guys. So I'm not expecting much bigger retracement than 148.30. Mark these levels. Uh, they, it, it, if it drops, it should not drop more than this. Okay, this is the zone here. Quarterly H1 and uh, the order block here, 148.30. So this is if it drops maximum. I don't think it will drop more. But if DAX is bought, then pound yen should probably follow. So that is very important. Uh, Martin is saying, could you please send me the link for blog, uh, my blog? Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you, Martin, for your uh, for your comments. And here... This is where you can actually read the blog. Uh, Chris and I do it always. 
you you just go to analytics and traders blog and here this is what i and chris are writing about you can also find some interesting fun stuff okay so yeah that is what i what i wanted to to tell you guys so please don't if you trade do not use big risk try to use uh lower risk than usual but still there will be trading opportunities and i personally will probably trade uh trade i will trade today i will also update my standard and daily analysis today and uh, i will trade after the elections uh, but definitely i will be if any if everything is as we think it will be buying the dips on pound yen buying the dips on dex buying the dips on euro dollar and of course if there is no surprises if there will be surprises then we can expect gaps and we can expect big drops in in markets for every pair where euro is base currency and for every national index i think uh, it will be a huge upset if that happens but still this time we shouldn't we at least we shouldn't see some big surprises so that was everything i hope that you enjoyed i gave you these levels guys i hope that you marked uh, these levels on your chart so there will be something for everyone and uh, yes as you can see that there is the risking uh, okay last thing here guys i have a small short on uh on uh this uh pound dollar here okay i sold it from the 80 level it's 15 pips now uh yeah the, the reason uh one of the reasons if euro dollar goes up uh, i mean euro because of the elections pound dollar pound should not be affected that much so that is the thing why i shorted this i clear rejection from this spot okay here and watch this i mean now i'll be watching 35 50 uh this will be the pound for today the important level for the pound and if it drops here then maybe we can go up so that is everything i uh i wanted to share with you uh i hope that you enjoyed and i hope guys that uh well uh we will see you uh on monday come trade with us let's see what will happen and let's make pips together cheers everyone trade safe